Hi again, I'd like to continue my discussion of Parse and making a, an app with Parse. And uh, so far, you know, I've got this, uh, this simple blog here where you can, you know, type in a post. Um, I like cheeseburgers, right? Right, and uh, you know, the, the post, once you submit it, it should show up on your list here, right? And so that's working pretty good, but you know, imagine this. Imagine if you were going to create posts, but you had to be signed in, right? So um, you need to be a, a registered user, and you have to log in with your user account, and then you know, all these posts are going to be attributed to you as a user or to another user that's logged in. Um, you know, Parse does a lot for us, and when it comes to creating user accounts, it's got that all figured out and it's all built in. If you've ever tried to create a website that had user accounts and you wanted to be able to manage those user accounts, there's a lot of like hidden detail you need to put into to your database and how your database manages those things. Parse does it all for us in, in a very simple way. So um, this is you'll find that this will even save you a, a lot of time here, um, especially. So. We're just going to do this in a in a couple states, but uh, you know the first the first step right here is going to be be to create a um, a sign up form. Okay, so what this means is you know we're going to have to have a form where you can sign in. You can't log in yet until you've created an account. So we'll we'll create the you know the sign in form first. Okay, I'm just going to put the sign in form above here. You know we'll later we can add some styles and kind of control how the, the page is laid out and we can even hide the sign up form if you're already signed in or you know show the login form if you're not logged in and then have a button to reveal the sign up form if you want to create a new account you know we can add all those features in later but let's just get the the nuts and bolts working right now okay so so anyway so let's go to our um, our site here and what I need to do first is I need to create a um, a sign-in form okay so this is the form that we're using right now to create a new post okay so what I'll do is I'm just gonna create a new um, a new form up here I'll just put an h1 above it to show us where it is right and then let's give this form an ID We'll just call it sign up, okay? And then um, I'm going to put a paragraph here and use an input tag, and we'll give it the ID name of sign up name, and this will be type text, okay? And then we'll do another one. So paragraph input. ID, sign up, password, and this one will be type password. Okay, so using type password will make this field act like a password input where, you know, it shows dots instead of um, the text that you type. And then last of all, we need a submit button. Let's check my spelling there, right? Um, this guy actually doesn't even really need an ID, but I'll put it on there anyway, just in case. In case we want to use it for something, right? And then we'll set the type to submit. So if the input is type submit, it's going to create a, um, the browser will, will create a button that is a submit button, okay? So we got sign up name, sign up password, sign up submit, right? And now let's um, let's set up our our form. So I'll put the form here, right below parse. Okay. And I'm going to start with um, with the ID name for the form. Right. We called our form sign up. Okay. So we'll put hash mark sign up, and then we'll put dot submit. Okay, so this will handle the submit. We're, we're doing it exactly the same way we did the previous form. Okay, um, and then we'll put a function in here to handle those submit actions. 
and then we want to collect the event object. And again, we want the event object to prevent the default behavior of submitting the form, which is to reload the browser. Since we're, our form is going to work like a little application in the browser, we're never going to refresh the page, right? It's just our app is going to load into the page, and then it's, it's just going to run there. It's not going to reload, okay? So, uh, so now that we've got that, let's collect our data. So I want to collect the username first. So I'll go in here and type in um, sign up name and then dot val to get the value from that input field. And then I'll do uh, var, how about, we'll just call it pass, right, for password. And then we'll say sign up password, okay, dot val. Right, and that'll give us the value from the password field. Right, so we got sign up name, sign up password, and the value is going to be what you typed into those two input fields. Okay, so now that we've collected that data, we need to make a user object. And the user object is very similar to the objects that you create here. And where this object is a post object, which is a custom class that we created to, to handle our blog posts, you know, um, Parse already has a user object built in, so we don't have to make our own. It's going to, you know, it's going to create one for us, and it's got this built in one that we can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable here called user, and then I'm going to say new parse.user. Okay, and that'll create a brand new parse user object. Okay, so this step is very similar to the step that we did here where we created a new post. Okay, except in our case, we had to create a post class to create new post objects from, right, as a source for new post objects. The user class is already built in, so we're just going to use the built in class to create new user objects. And then just like down below, we're going to set properties on our user object. So one of the properties we want to set is username. And that'll be equal to the name that you typed into the field. And then we want to set password to the value that you typed into the other field. Okay, so now we've set those properties on our user object. And unlike the regular objects where, you know, essentially what we did here, what we did there was, was these three lines. You know, we just did it with a user object, right? We created a new user object, set some properties. You know, with a regular um, object, you're going to say, you know, object.save. With a user object, you're going to use user.signup. Okay, so if you want to create a new user object, you're going to sign them up because it has to do a couple of special things. So we've got this special function for that operation. Okay, and this takes a couple parameters. Um, to be honest, I, I don't remember what this first one is. I just follow the example and, and type null in there. I'm sure this does something. We don't need it, whatever it is. So we just put a null there for now. And then we're going to do success colon is a function, right? So this is very similar to the other one, right? Um, to what we did earlier. So we say success colon, and then we define a function to handle the case of success. And then here, I'm going to put a comma and say error colon, and define a function to handle any errors that might occur, OK? And then you know I'll, I'll format this so I can read it. There we go, right? I think that looks pretty good. And, um, you know, if you have a successful sign up, what will happen is it'll pass the user object back to you, and then you can do something with that here, okay? Um, on an error, parse will pass you the user and an error message. So that's a little bit different, okay? Um, so, you know, if we look down here, you can see when we called object.save, there was success and error, and 
you know, on the error, you just got the error message, right? Um, over here, it gives you both the user and the error, okay? And we need to have something here. You can't leave that one out because the error is the second parameter, so we wouldn't be able to get it if we put if we had only error listed here. So we'll list them both. So we'll say console.log. And if there's an error, we'll call sign up, you know, or we'll print the message sign up error. And then we'll say error.message. Okay, and then we'll see a message. I don't have a successful sign up um, action, but we could use that. You could hide this, you know, the sign up form or, you know, show a message, welcome back, whoever, you know, right, or thanks for signing up, right? So, you know, I'll just keep it simple for now, but this is our sign up form, and let's save that, and then we'll go back to our page here, and I'll refresh it, and here's my sign up form, and we'll create a new user. So I'll type in test. And I have the, the console open here at the bottom, right? So I can see any error messages that might occur, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll create a new user, I'll call it test, and then I'll give it a super top secret password and uh, type submit. Hmm, well, no errors, so maybe, maybe it's working. Let's try it out. So I'll go to parse and refresh, right? So I gotta refresh the window here because it's not showing me the, the user object because it didn't exist before, but now that I've, I've added a user through signing up, you'll see that it adds these three um, new classes here. So, and these are special, they have these little things next to them, right? So I have a user table here, and you can see I have a user in here called test, right? And then um, there's a session here that says that test is logged in and kind of tells it, you know, which user is assigned to this session and then the session keeps track of, you know, a lot of information, right? And then there's a role, and so users can be assigned roles, and so we could add that to our, our, our app too. Um, but anyway, there you go. So there's parse sign up. Easy, right? So we just pretty much just made the form here, right? So I just have this form. I'll collect the data, username, password. We could have done some validation and a confirm password, and you can include an email in here and submit that with your user object. Um, and then we, you know, create the user object, set the properties on the user, and call sign up. So it's as simple as that. Okay, thanks for watching, um, and we'll continue. I'll add a login screen and some other stuff in the coming videos.